Hey, welcome to another video. Now, I just recently did a shop tour video. If you haven't watched that video, you can click that little thing up there somewhere, or I'll link it at the end of this video. Now, after I did the shop tour video, the number one question I got was about my miter saw station, specifically my miter saw fence, how I built it, what materials I used, where can you get materials to build your own. So I had this thought. I said, Jason, you should do a miter saw fence video. Now, I already built mine, so I'm not gonna show you how to build one, but I'm gonna show you how I built mine. I'm gonna link everything you need to build your own in the video description down below. It's insanely easy. I'm pretty lazy, so I didn't, I didn't wanna expend a lot of effort in this. So if you wanna build an insanely easy miter saw fence, I'll just watch this video and do what I do. All right, make that little moth fly around. For this project, you're gonna need two of these little flip stop clampy things. These are Woodpecker's brands, but I will leave links to all these products in the video description down below. You're also gonna need two Starrett brand measuring sticks. These are adhesive measuring tapes. You're gonna need one that reads left to right and one that reads right to left. You know, to get both sides. Then you're going to need four of these through adjustable knobs. I know I'm only showing you two, but you need four of them. Quarter inch. And some quarter inch bolts. These are quarter inch by 20. They are three inch. You don't have to have them that long, but you just need them to hook into the T-Track. Oh yeah, and then you need the extruded aluminum T-Track. This is four inch by four feet. That's a very important part and will make up the majority of your fence. Then you're going to need two pieces of two inch angle iron. This is eighth inch angle iron. I picked up at the big box store and I think it's three feet long. Then you're going to need a few screws. Doesn't really matter what kind of screws. These were laying under my workbench, so I just grabbed them. They're just going to hook the angle iron down to the workbench. It's also important to note that for this setup to work, your miter saw needs to be built down into your bench so that it's flush with your bench on the left and right side. If it's not, well, then this video might not be for you. And also, you should just do it anyways because it makes life much easier that way. So, quit being lazy and build your miter saw into your bench. All right, so this is how this is going to go. The first thing you're going to want to do is take a nice long straight edge and push it flush up against the existing fence on your miter saw. That's going to give us a nice straight line extending past our miter saw to position our auxiliary fence. Then you're going to take your angle iron piece, just throw it down loosely, generally in the right location, and set your piece of extruded aluminum right in front of it. Now, whenever I'm building an auxiliary fence, I like to set it back 1 8 inch behind the existing fence on my miter saw. Why, you might ask? Well, the most important place for your board to be flush against the fence is right where the miter saw is cutting. If you make your extension fence flush all the way along, if there is any bow in your board at all, it will be out of whack when you cut it at the miter saw. So setting it back an eighth of an inch helps to prevent this. Once we have our angle iron and extruded aluminum spaced correctly, we hold the angle iron to our workbench simply by drilling holes directly through the angle iron and fastening it down with those screws I found under my workbench. Next, we need to attach the extruded aluminum to the angle iron itself. So we simply mark out where the groove on the back of the extruded aluminum will land on the angle iron, and we drill a quarter of an inch hole directly through the angle iron. See how that hole lines up perfect with that groove? Fancy. Then we do the exact same thing on the other end. Then we simply take those quarter inch by 20 bolts I was mentioning, slide them into the groove on the back of the extruded aluminum, and push them right through that pre-drilled quarter inch hole. Then using our through nuts, we just tighten it on there. Now the nice thing about this system is 
it's quickly removed if you have to move your fence out of the way. You simply loosen that through nut, slide your fence back or forth, and then tighten it back down. Watch, see, I did it again, just so you could see what it looked like. Then with our angle iron securely fastened to our workbench with those quarter inch holes pre-drilled, we simply slide the quarter inch bolts into the groove on the back of the extruded aluminum and hook it to the angle iron, making sure the aluminum is flush against the existing fence on the miter saw. Then we just tighten everything down with those two through nuts and we are ready to move on to step two. Why do I keep saying we? It's, it's me, me, I'm doing this. There's no other person here. I'm gonna say me from now on. So the next thing you need to do is measure the distance from your saw blade to where your fence starts. Then taking one of your adhesive sticky tape measure things, you cut it to that length and you adhere it to the bottom of your fence. That's me pretending to adhere it to the bottom of the fence. Then it's time to add our stops. Now these little stop things are perfectly engineered to slide right into the top of the extruded aluminum through that little T-track. And they tighten down and, well, they stop and make the perfect setup for repeatable cuts on your miter saw itself. They're really fun to slide around. Sometimes I pretend they're choo-choo trains on a train track. Now you might be saying to yourself, it looks like that stop only goes down to about 12 inches. What, what if I want to cut something smaller than 12 inches? Well don't worry silly, I got a solution for that. What I did was I took a stock piece of wood and I cut it to exactly 12 inches. That way if I want to cut something smaller than 12 inches, let's say 3 inches, I move my stop to 15 inches, which is 3 inches bigger than 12 inches. I stick my stock 12 inch block in there and then, well, I cut my piece of wood. Now, I know this is a little bit of math and seems crazy, but 12 plus 3 is 15, so I get a 3 inch piece. The nice thing about these fences is also you can see if I want to do a compound miter cut and I can't tip my saw over, I just move the fence out of the way nice and easy and voila, down to a perfect 45. It's quick and simple. Then I can plop my saw back up into the upright position and boom, my fence is back, locked in, and ready for more cuts. It's really almost too easy. I mean, it's rare that you find something in woodworking as easy as this fence. And if you do it to one side, well, you just do everything I just showed you on the other side for your other fence. So there you have it, an insanely simple solution to making your own miter saw fence. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you want to see my entire shop tour video, check it out right up there somewhere and see how I have my other stuff set up. Or if there's something you would like to see how I've done it, comment down below and I'll try and make a video about it. Oh, don't forget to subscribe. All right.